Phosphorus forms a part of DNA, so is one of the major limiting nutrients for all living things, including plant growth, so therefore plays an essential role in food production. Humans impact the global phosphorus cycle by mining rock phosphates, a finite and geographically restricted resource, and then applying it to land as phosphate fertiliser. The challenge then is keeping it where the crop needs it and preventing it from entering natural environments or ending up in landfill. So efficient and sustainable management of phosphorus when it's in the soil can play a key role. For plants to use phosphorus, sufficient levels need to be present as inorganic forms at the root zone, the rhizosphere. But up to 90% of phosphorus fertiliser becomes unavailable to plants following application and this is predominantly due to three main processes. Adsorption onto soil constituents and precipitation to soil minerals such as aluminium, calcium and iron. Immobilisation into organic forms by microorganisms and transfer to waterways due to runoff or leaching. So, what are some of the methods we use as soil scientists to increase our understanding of soil phosphorus to help improve sustainable management? Determination of phosphorus in soils usually involves extraction, concentration and detection steps. Chemical fractionation methods are popular, relatively straightforward and affordable and give us some information on the relative solubility of different phosphorus pools. However, the amount of phosphorus extracted with these methods will depend on soil composition and is only operationally defined. I'm really interested in the biological dynamics at the rhizosphere and how they affect plant uptake of soil phosphorus. As inhabitants of the rhizosphere and bulk soil, microorganisms play a critical role in phosphorus dynamics. Such influential organisms include nematodes, bacteria and fungi. Microorganisms may directly affect phosphorus solubilisation and mineralisation, impact on root structure and function, or immobilise readily available sources of phosphorus so they are no longer available to plants. Determining microbial soil phosphorus has traditionally utilised fumigation techniques and is often used alongside chemical fractionation methods to quantify the soil phosphorus pool which is found in microorganisms. Employing genetic techniques can help us identify functional groups and specific functional genes in soil phosphorus transformations. In situ methods are able to give us a very useful visualisation of the root soil interface. With this rhizobox setup, we can see changes in root morphology, and with further analysis, such as zymography, we're able to visualise phosphatase activity. Phosphorus is cycled over diverse temporal and spatial scales, from the microscopic to global wind drifts. It incorporates lots of disciplines because geological, chemical, biochemical and biological processes all play a key role in phosphorus dynamics. This presents lots of challenges when trying to understand soil phosphorus, but for me keeps it really exciting and diverse.
If we want to close the loop on the global phosphorus cycle and manage it more sustainably, the soil is a really good place to start.